Yo folks, welcome. So today, South Devon, I'm gonna go for a place, an early one, and um, I'm using a six piece travel piece rod. And uh, I've bought a pair of them because I'm that impressed with them. Now, a lot of you over the years would have tried travel rods and stuff. I've never been a big fan. I've got to be honest with you. And I'll be honest and tell you the reason why. It might take a little bit more slightly to set these up than you would your normal, your normal beach casters and that. Having said that, I've had one of the most pleasure, pleasurable walks I've had in ages while I've been fishing. Now we've walked 45 minutes, or say at least half an hour to get to where we are. And uh, we, um, I've, I've had my hands free the whole, whole time. And I mean the whole time. So the main, main thing with this now is to make sure all the eyes line up. which can be quite, quite tricky. So I need a little... Nightmare. I stuck it too much, that's why. I think the trick is to line them up. And once they're lined up like that, pull them in together. Okay. Thanks a way to do it. So I've got one, two, three. One, two, three, four. five some of you are saying webby why don't you just use your beach casters honestly guys i mean for the sake of an extra couple of minutes setting your rods up you've got your hands free all the time and uh i honestly am very very impressed with these little babies right here i've got to say it um i'm never a, fra a fan of, of travel rods in the past just because i find them quite soft but I've got to be honest with you when I say this, and as I said before, this is all about being honest with doing reviews and stuff. I've actually paid out money for these rods, guys. And uh, you've got to give things, the, when, they, when they do work, the credit they deserve. And uh, these things right here do deserve that credit. I mean, they're just a really, really, really nice rod for what you're looking for. For those of you who want a rod to go in the suitcase and uh, go abroad and stuff, these have got all the backbone you'll need in a rod. I would, to, I would, to be honest, I've no guys what have been fishing and using them, and uh, they've had um, they've had some good fish on them, like blondes over the twenty pound mark, big eels, and stuff like that. So uh, you know they're going to handle it. They're very nice, J curvy which I like myself. Um, and this is the first time I'm gonna be fishing with them. Okay, so uh, the main thing is to position everything up correctly. As I said, Joseph, got Joseph down here. He's coming down for the bait. I'll grab him the bait now. He's using a loop rig, it looks like. Is it a loop rig? Loop rig, and I'm going to use a running up and over for uh, for one, and then I'm not sure what I'm going to put on the other yet, but I'll have a look. There you go, mate. All right. Yeah. So I'll get the uh, line up through the eyes first. As I said, it's, it's going to take a couple more minutes to set them up. You've got to expect that. But at the same time then, we, uh, we want to be in with a few fish, don't we? So uh, let's have a look what I've got here. Here they are. So these are my 1-0 up and over place rigs here I've got now. And uh, basically made up with fluorocarbon. I like the twenty pound Azuri. I think uh, I don't think you can beat it. If I'm honest, it's it's a lovely fluorocarbon line, which I use for all my sew rigs, my place rigs, and flounder stuff and that at the same time. 
So we've got a swivel on the end here, which I'll put on. Just tie them in like so. I'll go over the rig quickly now. But um oh, whoops. Ready to rock and roll here. Beautiful. So lovely day for it. Proper lovely clean water, which is one of the main things you look for, especially where I am at the moment. I mean if I come down here it was murky, I would always bring some raid raid stuff just for the simple fact that you, um, I don't think, I just think you're wasting your time for the place. I mean, not to say you won't get them, because you probably will get them, but at the same time, you, uh, you want to be there. So that's like, that's basically my rig. I've got a um, six ounce, just uh, like a continental weight there. Then on the business end, I've got black and green beads and I've got a, bead, um, a stop bead, and then I've just got my um, 1 0 off hook offset um, mounter extra. So, 1 0. So, that's basically it, guys. So, uh, time to get the ragworm. So, bait wise, so I was lucky enough to get into the South of Sea Baits in Plymouth, C. Martin, and uh, he sorted me out with a, uh, a little extra prawn as well. Cheers, Mark. Um, he sorted me out with some rag there. So, uh, me and Joseph. Only got a tenner's worth, they were nearly sold out, so I managed to get a, a, a tenner's worth, which was probably the last tenner's worth there, which, uh, which is ideal. I mean, it was a last minute call, really, but I've got some lovely um, black lug, which is from Hooker's Baits, and I've got some crab, I've got some frozen, but I've also got some fresh there, what I've picked up last weekend from Tackle Trader. So I've, I've got a bit of everything, we've got some sand deal, we've got some squid in there, we've got, we've got everything from a diddle I know down to my nose, to be honest. So um, that's good. Now I'm going to leave one of the rag out. I'm going to keep the, uh, the crab in there and the eels and everything else. So I'm just going to get the main main attraction stars out. So what I've got here at the moment is a uh, is my hook, obviously. So what I'm going to do, I've got my scissors here somewhere, and I've also got I've got these little these little packs, little tackle tart really. But I bought them because they go with the sentry bag. But I've got my leads and everything in there now. It's a lovely little touch, to be fair. But I'm, uh, I'm simply going to get one of these crabs here now. And what I find is place love a bit of crab. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to pop these. I mean, I've had them. They're still alive just. And um, I've had them in the fridge all week. And I'm quite fortunate, really. My, I've got one of those American fridges. And they seem to keep crab brilliantly at, the temp, at, the, at a really cold temperature. So they were still moving around this morning. So I'm basically going to uh, get this one all sorted peeled off I'm not, I'm not gonna fish a whole crab guys the trouble is where I'm fishing I'm fishing 20 pound fluorocarbon line all right you've always got a chance of a big fawny having said that what I, what I find personally is when these places are first starting to come in they seem to come from the deeper water marks first especially where we're fishing we're fishing near an out, out, mouth of a, of a big estuary and um, I find that they like to stay in a deeper water first so when you're targeting these fish earlier on you're better lot better off targeting fish from like the deeper water marks um, and then obviously as they start coming in in numbers then start targeting them from the main estuaries like the mouth of the estuaries themselves it's only a little tip probably upset a few there by giving it but that's what we're here to do we're here to help and we it's always nice to see a few people getting a few fish all right so what i've got there and i've got these little things here which i picked up the other day i actually got these from plymouth angling at tom and uh little bait sticks there yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that in there like so and then i get my bait elastic and i'm going to basically come around like so not massive baits but just just enough really all right now a place ain't going to turn its nose up at that it's really not so then what i've got the joy of doing is slipping that off there like so so whatever what end i want my hook so i want that in there really to go downwards like that okay so i'll bring my hook right over down through the crab like so out through the crab like that and then what i'll do is i'll pull back on this little bait tool 
like so and that will put my crab straight onto my hook point there now yeah leaving the point proud it's very important to leave that hook point proud all right because um you're going to get a place come along and they got big old mouths those big four pounders that we're after and you want to make sure that hook goes down and so one of the main things of using a running up and over rig it's got a little bit of play there to allow it to go go back its throat before it's set now i've got a lot of people will use green beads a lot of use people black peas a lot of people use different color beads personally i use i like to use black and black and green i simply tie that all the way down like that like so and uh that is my crab bait all right um sometimes what i like to do is just give it a little uh, bit above the crab so it looks more natural but you've still got the bling there at the same time you know what i mean so that's it i'm going to get this one out now quickly so we've got a rod in the water and then i'll uh, i'll set my other gear up and then we'll get right into the session okay folks so i'm going to make my way around on these slippy rocks to a casting platform now I'm going to bang this out into the mouth of the bay I'm fishing next to me. Now this bay where I've, I've fished at the moment, in big, big rough weather, when it's all turned up, you've got a lot of white horses, as, in, as I like to call them, a lot of waves coming through and that. It seems to turn it up for the small eyed and uh, I've had some really good small eyes here. I don't really fish this a, a lot anymore for rays. It, to me, it's, a, it's sort of like a... It's a, a, a mark which a lot of guys come to when they're obviously finding out where rays are and so it's a nice like starter mark if I, if I so to speak. It's quite safe as long as you've got not big squells coming into the rocks it's quite safe to fish in the daytime and that as well and uh, it throws up a large range of species which a lot of anglers pick up on. So uh, yeah it's not somewhere I'd necessarily go to now but I like to come down early to have a go for a place if I'm honest because uh, you have got chance of getting some good, good fish down here. But, um, right, I'm going to have to tip up a little bit because I haven't got a lot of room there. So uh, let's give it a go. Hopefully we'll be like it again. As I said, guys, it's, they've cost me 169 quid each. Um, so they're quite an expensive rod. I wouldn't say they're cheap, but at the same time, look at that. It's, uh, it's got a lovely build on it, six piece, 12 foot six in length, 3.8 meter, cast in three to eight ounce, 85 gram to 170 gram. And I've got that matched up with a Penfathom original mags with the Gomez handle. These are absolutely beautiful. Look at that. That is what you call sex on, on a rod. <laughs> but um, we'll get this one in the tripod now. I can let that go now. It's got a bomb lead on and it can just bobble around in the, in the bay. Nice crab bait on him. Hopefully we can get that place we're after. Whee. Not a lot of room here. Okay, so that can bobble around now, do what it wants. I might set my drag slightly. The reason I'm going to is not necessary for the place, but I have got a chance of hitting into a form back here. So if I hit it a little bit loose, obviously my tripod will bend over, and I know if I do get a ray, it's going to uh, it's going to obviously allow it to take line. Having said that, for a place, I really don't want that to happen. I want the place to hit it. And it, and it and the hook to set straight away. So once I've got this ever rod set up, I'll probably take that off and uh, we'll start again. Okay then, so uh, next rod up now. Don't wanna lose that. So I've sort of like separated them and put them into a different order. But that was the rod I've not used before because this one's all f fixed and set up. So, uh, probably see new and I've just gone in and tried to hammer hit hammer it straight away so uh, there you go so the first two bit bits in now these bits here are what not I need to really set up properly now so I can set up like that 
I can turn it around when I think it's set correctly. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a reel on this straight away now. And uh, Joseph's up there setting up at the minute. We're going to have a word with him in a minute. But um, I just want to basically see, be able to see my rod at the same time of, as fishing. So when I'm setting up, I can uh, watch out for bites because you really have got a chance of hitting into a fish throughout the tide here. I mean, I've had them over low water, I've had them over high water, so, uh, and, and back tides and on the flood. So you have got to be on the ball, but especially with that crab bait, I mean, you've got some good chance to get some nice big wrath here. Um, you've got a chance of uh, hitting into a lot, in the, summer, in the summertime, you've got a chance of hitting into anything here. I mean, it's one of those venues what could throw up anything throughout the year, different times wise, because it sees a lot of, lot of um, it sees a lot of species, um, different species throughout the year. Years ago, you see, a, a, a not big, but you'd always see co-fish there. You'd, I've seen a couple of co-fish here over the time, like back in the day. I haven't seen them for many years, but... Uh... Right, so I'll put that on. Oh, look at that. I don't think you can get much better than that. So let's have a look here now, see what we can get. All right, so that's that. What sort of use here now on the other one then, guys? Um, do you know what? I'm going to use the same again. Why not? You can use free up for lappers and stuff like that, which will work. And uh, to be honest, I always find that you get the better sort of size fish on, on single with one single bait. I'm not sure why that is, but I don't know what I've done with this one. I've obviously uh, thought about what I was doing and not done it correctly. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. This looks like it could be a bit of a pain in the backside. But, um, There you go. Joseph just cast one out to the horizon. Nice, nice cast on Joseph there. Now, here we go. We're getting somewhere now, guys. There you go. Okay, baiting up time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here now is get I've got some I've got some rag there okay so I'm gonna put some of the bigger rag up on my hook like so okay I like to leave it a little bit so it's got some form of stuff coming off the worm okay and then what I'll do is I'll use another worm like so, to be honest, I'm using the wrong end of the uh, needle there, really. Basically, what I'm doing there is just following it down as, as good as I can, right the way end, about an in, I don't know, 20 mil off it, 
I'll bring the worm out just to have a little bit of an attractor coming off there like that. Then I'll put the bait down. Then what I'll do here, see these, these are lovely and prime from Hooker's Baits. And uh, yeah, look at that. So I'm not gonna use a whole one of these, right? I'm using these for teeing off in. So basically what I'm gonna do is cut that in half. So I've got a bit there for in a minute, okay? And then uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna tip the end off there where it's a bit, and then all I'm gonna do there then is, what's what end am I looking at here? I want that on first, so I need to, I'm gonna put that on the hook first actually. So if I get that there, like so, then I can put the, the uh, baiting needle, where's the end of the baiting needle? I need my glasses on, don't I? Right, I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I'm basically holding that tight now, okay? And then basically what I'll do is I'll bring the worm up over the hook point like that, see that? And then just bring the worm and just play the worm around, try not to blow it at all. Okay, and that goes on to, onto there like so. What I can do then with these beads, if I hold the hook, I can pull these back. Um, and on a worm bait, I'll fish this close to the bait. So I'll come up so like that, okay? And then what I'll do here now, is I've got a bit of black, what I'm gonna tee it off with. Now, some people use sand deal, mackerel. Black's brilliant to be tapped off with a little bit of sand deal. I think they like a little bit of fish bait place. Um, but that is, is basically it there like that. And then what I'll do is I'll come and bring that worm bits down like so. And then uh, I'll bring that one down there. I'll bring these attractors down like so. That one's the top and that's basically my worm bait, okay? Well, what I do is I'll get my baiting elastic. I, I like to personally put a little bait, a bit of, of baiting elastic around this back black lug at the bottom just to really set it into place. Now, there's another little tip, which I am going to do. You haven't got to do it all the time. I don't know where the other bit is. I did have half a crab here somewhere. Here it is now. I'm just going to put, literally, the smallest amount of crab just to tee off the bait. And it, I'm not going to... I don't want to move that hook point at all, okay? But it's just to... It's just to basically go around this like so. so it turns it into a bit of a cocktail bait. But I'll find that that little bit of crab will just be the teaser and then uh, job done there it is that's going around on the the bottom of the seabed hopefully I'll pick up that three pounder we're after the day hopefully a four just going for the rig quickly so i've got um continental, continental uh, weight on the bottom there six ounce going up to an imp going up to a gemini swivel link clip i've got a hundred pound gemini um swivel I've got two beads going up to a section of line, going up to another 100 pound swivel. And then I've got an STR spring with a clip down there. I've put bigger beads on it slightly there, going down to a 100 pound swivel, going on to a Gemini swivel link clip. And uh, that's all you need, guys. And then obviously when I literally um, place the bait up, like so, I'm left with a long flowing trace out there to target a place. Now I've got one, as I said, out to the mouth of the bay. I'm gonna sort of hit it over towards the um, Gara sort of side there now. And what I'm gonna do is try and get some distance with it to get it over that drop and into that tide. And hopefully we can see a few fish out. So I'm gonna get up on here now. Where I wanted to be, right on that tide line. Just drop there now. It's a bit stuck for room there, so I've just basically done the layback cast. Let it slip behind me as it's dropped, just uh, turned in and hit it. It won't, for me, it doesn't go as far as personally as the uh, as a pendulum cast, but at the same time, it's. Uh, it's all you need really to get out over that water. I mean, nine times out of 10 here, I think you're probably casting over the bigger fish. 
bigger fish would be holding up right in the good these bottom rocks here but uh, obviously we don't want to get snagged up and stuff so uh, there we go Staro Bay, it's the mouth of the Salcan River, um, mouth of the estuary basically, and uh, you've got Eastport mouth over the side, done some few videos over the years over there, right over the back side there with the green fields in behind the, the rocks below that, and then you come around, you've got, um, you've got like Pearl, Pearl Point over the back there, and then you've got uh, Staro Bay, so uh, Joe's up there at the moment, with his two rods having a go. And uh, hopefully we can see a few fish out here today. I mean, uh, there's been a few smaller ones caught. Obviously, um, I could have done with scaling the hook size down, really, but it is what it is. You're out there for all for all or nothing, isn't it? Fish big or go home. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the attitude today, guys. I don't want to be too eager, but um, I've literally ch just chucked that crab bait out with. Uh, yeah, we got some place, boys and girls, we got some place. So, blacks, a little bit of rag, tipped off a bit of squid, and uh, we're definitely getting bites. So a couple of lovely bites there now. As I said, straight over the drop, there's a bit of a tide line there, that's where you want to be. But the fish has gone right slightly, I've cast up left, and it's got definitely a bite. See that now? Yeah, good sign of a place. Exactly what we want. A bit like flounder, isn't it? You don't know when to go. But um, it's definitely a fish playing around with it. Trouble is, I'm a big fan of bomb leads, I really am. Especially on, on places like this, where you've got mixed ground and stuff, and you can let the, let the lead work in the right places. And, and that's exactly what food's doing, guys. If you're going somewhere and it in a, in a 200 gram lead and it's staying in the same spot constantly, the fish got to find you. When you're playing around with the leads and stuff like that, especially at the moment, you're finding the fish, and um, I, I find it, especially with place fishing, flounder fishing can be the same, and ray fishing. A lot of people don't give it the justice it deserves when it comes to bomb leads. But I'm, I've got a lot of slack here at a minute. Lovely day for it. I mean, especially this coastline, you want that water. You want that clear water. Obviously, uh, f place and uh, flounder and, and a lot of the flat, flat fish are sight feeders. So, um, got a bite there. He's, he's, definitely gone, he's definitely playing around with it. Trouble is, I've got two ragworm. They've got a bit of black. Then I've got the uh, tipped off of a tiny bit of crab. I think it's gone straight for the crab. But um, who knows? First and second bite was quite aggressive. And there's little taps there now, little taps. Well, I just want to make sure the fish is on. It's slacking, to me, it's slacking me off quite a bit at the minute. So, yeah, he's into a few fish today. Yum. Definitely a fish playing around with that. I'm not going to hit it to, I'm sure, 100%. I've had a few knocks, it's slacking me off slightly, but um, one of them in it, one of them. But um, yeah, let's see how it goes here. So I'll actually just purchase. It's not in there, in here. Some new weights as well from Southwest Sea Bait. So uh, 
clip that on there. I'll give these a whirl as well. But it feels a little bit more heavier than the other one, which should be uh, which should be nice. But um, no, let's have a let's have a go then. So exactly the same again. I'm going to uh, run up the worm like so. All right, and then I'm going to go straight on with black. I'm not going to muck around here now, I don't think. I haven't got loads and loads of rag, which is a bit of, um, I'm a bit gutted about really. That'll go on there like that, yeah, that's it. And then uh, put a bit of black on there as well. Yeah, that's all I need. I ain't going to go silly. So that, yeah, I've definitely got fish on there. The lead's gone back out to the to the left again now. I've just seen that spring back, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get this one on here now, and then I'll get that in. So uh, I'll bring it around like so, okay, and then black lug around. It's got a bit of black lug there like that, and pull that down in together, like so. Not massive baits, guys. You don't need to for place. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I've got a bit of crab here. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to use that crab bed just for teeing off now. Some people cut the lungs out, depending on what species I'm going for, whether or how, how fussy I'm feeling, really. But um, I'm going to put a bit of crab on that there now. I don't want to waste it. And then, voila. That's, uh, that's pretty much all you need. It's a uh, nice little fine, nice little fine, fine place bait there, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see. So I'm going to pull that bead down to the top, like that. Balls up through, black on the side, and that, my friend, is ready to cast out. So. I'm going to wipe my hands off a little bit, no one likes this rag, and then we'll, uh, we'll get this fish in, hopefully. Just give him a few rattles and see if, uh, see if it's a fish or not. Right, Joe, I've got a fish on here, I think. Huh? Yeah, this one's been going for ages. I'm hoping so, anyway. I'm going to look a bit silly, else, not I? <laughs> right, let's go and have a look. This rod at the minute, it's just tip. I don't think I've got a fish on it. I can't feel nothing on the minute. Nope. And it's one of them. It doesn't happen all the time. But can, you can see it's happened here. It hasn't unhooked. It just hasn't unclipped. It's a, prob it's a problem sometimes with the up and over rig. It's not every time. Nine times out of ten, that'll come back in, in one every time. Uh, but on, unfortunately, the day where it's come out, it's, uh, it's tangled around the top which is not the first time it's ever done it. It probably won't be the last time it's ever done it. But um, 
it's not what we want at the end of the day because I've got uh, I've got a bait what's been out there. It looks like something's had a go at it because all the crab has been nipped away. Maybe smaller fish, you don't know. But it might be worth hook, sizing the hook down, but I'm not going to do it. What I'm going to do now is basically unclip that rig, clip this rig here straight on, okay? And then I'm going to do exactly the same again. I'm going to cast him out. Come so cast him out. I'm not going to say the horizon either because um, you aim towards the horizon, didn't you? But you always get some sausages on Facebook or YouTube saying that one the horizon. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the reason I'm not going to do it. If you haven't got nothing, something nice to say, don't bother saying it. It is my total model, guys. The world is full of enough negative things without us all being negatives at the same time, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. It's a new improved Andy Webb. Right, I'm going to cast this one out now. It's going to do a laid back cast again, really. It's not a lot. I ain't got much choice here, guys, if I'm honest. It's, um, it's not a lot of room to really swing the lead. Gonna give this one a quick couple pullbacks as well. Okay. Just get that bait moving a little bit with the tide, really. Try and get some distance in a minute, eh? Well, guys, so uh, we uh, say goodbye to um, winter as we move into spring. And um, I love these sort of couple, first couple months now. I love the place fishing. It's one of my favorite things really when it comes to fishing i do enjoy place fishing it's um it's a lovely scenery around here it's a lovely place to be on your own sometimes down on rocks secluded and uh just you and the fishing rods and the sea to worry about and i mean it can be quite um quite relaxing and uh for many of you oh, look the sun's coming i'll get to put my shades on the day i didn't think it would be that early but it is but um it's it can get quite busy down here in summers. There's a boat here now, but a lot of water skiers and stuff like that tend to come around this sort of area, and it can be a nightmare to fish sometimes. But it all depending on the people, what's on them, nine times out of ten, a lot of the families stay into the bay and leave you alone here. But you always get a lot of, like, um, the old one or two start coming past on their uh, jet skis and stuff like that, which can be a pain in the backside. But um, at the end of the day, you're all here to enjoy the, the, the area, aren't you? But um, one thing I have liked to see, see today, I've, it's been a long time since I've come down here and it's very clean and tidy. I mean, back in the day, I've come down here before and there's been a lot of like rubbish and things left here, which is very sad to see, especially when you come to areas like this, which are really like fantastic views and very beautiful and that. And to see like people leaving litter and stuff like that is just, it's just not needed. I mean, um, it's, this gives some fantastic winter sport here as well, guys. I mean, you get, you'll get cod here. I've, I've had cod here. And I've had nothing big like codling and stuff. Um, but I've had, yeah, I've had a lot of different species here over the years, as I said. I've had some good, half decent, and not massive blondes, but I've had blonde rays, um, small eyed rays, form back, spotted rays. It's one of the only venues I've ever fished and had a form back, a small eyed, a spotted, and a blonde off in, in the same session. Um, I had a bite, nice bite then. Ooh, I did have a nice bite then. What rod was it? I think it was... I think it was my left rod. What I want with these now is that snatch. 
You know what I mean? You want that, you want that big two pound plus fish to come along and just go whap, have that. You know what I mean? That's what you want. Whether it's going to happen today, I don't know. I mean, there's been a few smaller ones come out. We, we got here we, early one year and uh, we had some fantastic sport for the day. I mean, we had some good drone footage and stuff like that. And it was a joy, to, joy that, that day, really. But um, sometimes it's just about, about being out and about, isn't it? And just uh, giving it your all. But um, we, we've started this online specimen event for any of you what's interested. So a single best specimen of the year. And uh, we got an overall prize and runner-up prize for the adults and the juniors. So it's something to really get into, guys. I mean, the only thing is you've got to get certified scales. Having said that, if you're an angler and you're taking your angling seriously, everybody should have certified scales. It's, it, at the end of the day, it's exactly the same with your rod and reels. It comes as a package, in my eyes, if you're involved in specimen sort of side of fishing. But um, it's... Uh, it's got it's seen a lot of anglers join so far. We're gonna have a bit of fun with it. We've got monthly uh, monthly best fish. We've got some competition events. What a weekend rover, summer and winter. And uh, there's something for everybody to take and get involved with. For anybody on YouTube, what is looking to get involved, please comment on the video on the links below, and I can send you the details. Um, or if you've got an email address, put your email address down, uh, or email seeangleadventures at outlook.com, and I can send you the email forward with all the details of how to join. I mean, we'll have a Facebook group on there, but you. Can can submit videos to me direct through WhatsApp, um, so you can obviously take part in it still. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, guys, it's single best fish of the year, and uh, everybody's in with a chance of winning it. As long as you put a bait in the water, who knows? You know what I mean? And uh, it's uh, it's a funny game sometimes because it sees some some un absolutely unreal fish caught throughout the UK, and uh, I feel that it's a lot even scale. And some of the weights what's been put, picked in that it makes it fair for all species. And I do apologise for all the YouTubers out there who have seen enough of me talking politics over the last few weeks. But at the same time, guys, we've, um, it's something what I'm very passionate about and I feel that if I don't do it, nothing's going to ever get done. But uh, anyway, it's enough politics. Let's get back to the fishing. Never trick I'll give you a place fishing. If you get loads of bites sometimes and you're not, not hooking up, it's worth changing your bomb lead, all right? Just give it a go and stick a grip lead on, okay? It's as easy as that, right? Because sometimes a simple case of that, obviously straight away with a bomb lead, you get your tips got to set set the fish. But with that sort of fish thing there, that's going through. With that going off like that, the power of what that's gripped to and the power of the that fish going off with the with the rig I'm using is enough to set the hook. And that's what it is. Just sometimes it's just a simple case with you can it's, you've got to try things at the end of the day. If you're getting loads and loads of bites and it's not working, nine times out of ten you'd scale down hook because you think oh, the, the, the hook's a bit big for the fish. But if that's not working still, and you think to yourself, I'm getting some really good bites there, definitely try a grip leg, guys, honestly, especially place fishing. It's worked for me over the years. Uh, just simple simple things, really. But I've, that line there is slackening right off constantly. And that was the one I was getting a lot of bites off. So what I'm gonna try and do in a minute is, um, is I'm gonna put a gripper on that, just to see if it makes a difference or not. But I have got a sandwich in that, so what have I got today? I've got a chicken classic, a triple sandwich. Packet of Monster Munch. What else have we got here? We've got a Twix, and we've got a Capri Sun, and a bottle of water, so looks like we're gonna eat well anyway. I'll put that in the shade there for a minute, but um, yeah, my, my right one sl sl dropped slack slightly again, so. Yeah, we're definitely going to try a gripper. Going to have a sandwich, bait up, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll get another rig out on the go and see uh, see if we can get fish out. But what a lovely day! We got the all the incoming at the minute. It's not high water; it's like five o'clock. So uh, I think we'll fish to about seven this evening. Fish into darkness, and then uh, we'll make our way home and uh, see what the evening brings. We really have just got to try and get a fish out now. This one's been out for a little while. So, uh, gonna bring it, try and bring him in. So, for this rod so far, um, loads of power through the blank up to the tip section, and at the minute, you've got the top basically just the top section of the tip, really. I mean, where it changes from white to black, it's got tip movement there. Um, quite pokey. 
Joseph's just been uh, a bit off by spider crabs. So I'm hoping I haven't. Have I or not? I haven't, no. But, I've been smashed. So, I mean completely smashed. So, uh, there isn't no damage to the hooks or the line there. Nothing at all. Who knows? Only one way to find out. Let's get another one out. So, the joys of this, being prepared. Not like Webby to be prepared, is it? But I think these glass off for a minute. I don't actually need them on. Um, so I can just basically unclip this one here. I can't unclip that one here. Because that's the one, I'm going to have to bait this one up because it's not the one what I've got of connection that's uh, tied straight on there unfortunately it's trouble isn't it rushing around want to get a bait in the water and uh, not think about what you're doing but um what am i going to do here now do you know what i'm feeling i'm feeling i'm feeling a black lug one coming on that's what i'm feeling I'm feeling a black lug so uh i'm going to go for blacks here and i'm going to do something a little bit different so it's going to basically run this up the hook point like so okay all the way around up there like that that's the first bit job done right next thing i'm going to do i'm going to get a packet of sand deal i'm just going to cut that open Bring one sand out a minute, put that back in the uh, cool bag to keep cool. Then I'm going to fill it just a single bit of sand eel. Just to fill it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it right beyond the back of the head as well. So, I get the guts in that. And then I'm going to cut it in half there. Like that. All right. I'm going to do with that now. I'm going to put that on the one old part of the hook I'm going to turn him round like that all right then you've got to use bait elastic with this guys okay it's, you, all I'm doing is basically tipping off that bait just up the hook shank as well not like dangling it down I'm just dressing it around on the sh going up the shank really okay And then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put, bring the hook around the shank like out with the black lug. I'm just going to tie around like that. Okay, like that. Job done. Not loads of bait elastic. Bring that right down to the bottom of the uh, the bait. And I've got my attractors there then, which I'm going to bring up the side of that. And then, literally, job done. I've got a nice little uh, compact bait ready to go off. So sun's coming out, so I'm going to try and dress this uh, this bait so it doesn't uh, go all over the place. That one there is the bait which is ready to go out again. So I'm going to hide that one on there, ready to go on that other one. So with this now, I'm going to, just going to have a little play around. So I'm going to put that there now. I'm going to put 170 gram lead on this rod now. And uh, we'll have a go. So that'll come down like that. That will come down like that. And that is ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna go and cast him out now. And uh, hopefully we can see a fish out. Be nice, wouldn't it? All right, see if we can get this one out here then. Grip lead time. See if it makes a difference between a bite or not more than anything. I'm going to try and get out a bit more out at, out at sea, so to speak, than where I was a minute ago. 
but uh, I haven't got a lot of room to cast really here guys so that is what it is I'm afraid into the bay as I said just playing around with it a little bit I've got room there out to the left hand side that's why I was putting a ball head on oh, no way. look at that clicked in but that there then is uh, is set hopefully something comes along and smashes it There it is. So, do you know what? It's actually t-shirt weather. I'm gonna take my jumper off in a minute. Joseph's just casting everyone out. One out to the left, grip led on. And the, uh, the other one's out in front who's slackened off slightly but I've just had a little play with it it's nothing there so it's just a waiting game isn't it absolute waiting game it's uh it looks perfect for it but uh, I was told that there was a couple when it was some murky and there was a couple small ones that out yesterday but um I don't know I was feeling it as I was walking out here and I was really feeling like that first bite, it seemed to like do 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 straight off. But um, there's nothing happened ever since. Always gonna be like this early. I mean, you've got to be, you've got to beat the, be the early bird, unfortunately, and uh, keep putting the time in down here and keeping it quiet. Because what we found is over the years, we, we would get down to the car park at one o'clock in the morning, okay? And uh, we'd have our gear ready, and for like half past five, five o'clock, when it's still dark, we'd be on our way out here to different marks around, and we would we'd fish in the first hour with some sand deal with squid, targeting the rays and that, and then as it started to started to come up into um, daylight, uh, we would start in the place baits out, and uh, we we got into them really early one year, and I mean really early kept it under our wing and we sort of had it to ourselves for a little bit but there was nothing massive caught um early on unfortunately but the trouble is when it when it starts getting numbers of plays come out and stuff like that everybody's on it and um it's not a massive area for like loads and loads it's not like chisel for example there's only certain rocks and outcrops and that around you can get on so it's, uh, it's having your wits about you and obviously uh, knowing a little bit and trying to get in early or get up early and beat the crowds. I mean, like the venue we're on here now, if you've got this rock, you, really, you could get four people on here. I've had four people on here at Push. Um, it's quite tight. You're obviously restricted to where you can cast and stuff. But um, at the same time, it's uh, you've got two of you, like me and Joseph is, is now, you've got the run of the show. I mean, not one of us hasn't got the upper hand on the other. You got you get place throughout all here. You know what I mean? I've, I've been on that mark and had place, and the guy where I am hasn't had them before, and I've been here and had them, and they haven't had them. It's where they turn up, unfortunately. But I, I feel distance isn't, isn't necessarily needed either. I think sometimes you'll cast over the place. I've been down here before with guys who don't cast very far, and um, they've they've nailed it like over the time of fishing here. And I feel sometimes you just want to be on that bit of sand, just the other side of the rocks. You get you're going to have the chance of getting smashed by wrasse and stuff like that. But if you can you can keep baits there and that, I'm pretty sure you would see some decent fish shot out from there. You know what I mean? But um, no, it's uh, it is an amazing part of the coastline. And uh, yeah, what a lovely sunshine day. You know what? I can get to put the glass in. Every time I put these on, it goes back off. <laughs> so hopefully it stays out for a little bit. Joseph rashi has got one. You want to slow down and keep it up, look. He's going like a bat out of he is. That's a fish on, isn't it? Huh? 
Do you have a bite? Yeah, bite it's got a fish on now. No. Someone's had your bait though. There you go. Go over and see Joseph a minute anyway, shall we? Say hello. So this, a lot of you don't see him very often, but he's come down to stay with me for a little bit. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's fishing what you would know as a loop rig. So it's a one up, one down, and uh, he's using slightly bigger trace line than I'm using there. And uh, yeah, as you can see, he's using, what are you baits using, Joe? So I'm using wag. Yeah. Tipped with squid tentacles. Tipped with squid tentacles. Very nice. Nice little platform he's got here as well. I mean, um, it's one of my favourite places to fish when I'm here, really, because you've got a lot of room. You can move to the side to cast. And, um, yeah, it's, you tend to get the fish in sort of like this sort of area here. You've got, you've got, you've got more chance of it in the tide line than you have where I am, really. But, he, as I said, he's, he's not down... He's not down uh, something where it's not a venue he can come to all the time, so we sort of like uh, try and put him on the uh, best sort of side, really. But you've got more chance to get, I would say you've got more chance of getting the spotted on this side, and, the, and especially the blondes. I've never had blondes that side, it's always been this side. And um, there's a tide line, what comes out right in front of you here. <laughs> getting them past that. I've never had nothing massive, biggest is like 16, but um, I've had lots of double figure fawnies and small lines and that over the year. Uh, over the years, and uh, yeah, yeah, you seem to get in a few bites there, boy, didn't you? That one pulled right over. Nice. Some, uh... Some people don't like the bait you need, or I don't either. I'm like that. <laughs> I only use it for the camera half the time. It's just easier, isn't it? Bomb, bomb. See, he's all set up. A couple of squid tentacles. Away you go. Let's go and uh, see. First one done. See Joseph just cut the, t the squid tentacles off there. And using them as attractors, which is a very good idea as well. A lot of people do different methods. It's like fish baits, but they do like attractors. He's got like those um, glow and black beads. He's made a second rate place rig up here today, isn't he? He made one last night. Uh, <laughs> he spent a fortune in mats earlier. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll get Joseph casting out now. What reels are they? Oh, right. I thought they were the ones about the mag. I was going to say, they've been gone. <laughs> he's got some really fast fathoms going on the go. Really fast, and he's getting magged.
Mate, that's a nightmare. That one, that rig keeps on... I don't know what that's doing. For some reason, this one keeps on uh, looping up. I'm not sure why. It's actually doing my head in with it as well. Let's have to have a look, won't we? Let's... Um, Clips you using? Just no up and over clips. Might have too much spring on that. No, it's not. It's not. I don't think there's uh, enough spring. No, there is enough spring. Right, here we go. Right, let's get back into work. Got one set to ready to go anyway. Do, 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 do. Ideal like this, What's that mate? Like this, fishing off the rocks. What's that? Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's where I want to be. Straight that tide. Lovely. Grip lead on that. I've uh, just been having a little play around with them, taking some photos and stuff for the um, Facebook page. And uh, I turned around and I noticed some slack line and then I turned around again and I noticed a right nice pull down. Joseph at the moment is getting a nightmare with um, spider crabs. But notice a bit of slack line there. Right. I'm going to bring this in a minute. It's been out there a little while. But, um, so I don't know if that's the lead or not. Could be the wind. There's a bit of wind behind me now. We only want one. I know it's early, we'd be happy with between one between us. No one likes to blank, do they? Early doors yet, we got all afternoon. No fish there. I do slow down when I'm going in close here now because I've had it a couple of times of uh, reeling in and a, bat, a ras has shot up and snapped it. So, uh, yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Only keep trying, can you? All you can do is keep trying. Okay then. So I'm gonna start from scratch here once again. This time. And have a proper little play here. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put more of a bigger bait on this time. I mean uh, it's coming back fine. So it's not concerning me that. But uh, I'm going to use that one again, I think. So I'm going to basically pull these back up here slightly a minute. Like so. I might just try a straight rag one, you know. 
I mean, uh, first one up. It wouldn't be the first time it paid off. You just got to play around with things. I mean, the tide's not fantastic at the minute, if we're totally honest. It's, um, I'd like to see it up towards three to three o'clock, sort of, be nice. But if it does fish over low water as well, so you can never say never, can you? I got down like that. I think that's it, isn't it? That's all you can do. I was tempted to put a grip lead back on that, and I think I'm gonna just for the minute. Okay, so uh, where are we? So I got that one there. It's all set. That one there dangles down like so. So if I come over here and clip that up, I'll drop my other spare rig down. That'll come in like that, so so that's just straight rag on there now, guys. I'm just having a little play around a minute just to see if we can. Uh, Woo -hoo -hoo. Don't want that, do we? I might shorten down the length of my trace line in a minute as well. If uh, I'm just going to have a little play around, really. So that goes there like that. That goes there like that. That pulls down like that. And that is ready to go up there. So let's go and give it a go. I'm gonna aim slightly right slightly and try and get into that deeper water a little bit. I've got a little bit of room there between me and Joseph. So I can afford to have a little bit of a play. So normally I'd just hey. That's what you need stud for, guys. 100% studs on these rocks. If I never had studs, then I'd been slipping all over the place. I did lose my foot in, but just slowly sl slid to enable me to get back up on my feet again. So, normally, back in my old days, I would drop the lead down, come like that, and then just did it. But I feel my reels are running a bit fast to be able to do that. So I sort of got to load into the rod, which, uh, is what it is, I'm afraid. I mean, can't really argue with that. A bit of a strong wind today. Don't know if you can pick that up on the sound, but that there flew. I'm right over that drop off at the back there now. Estimated 100 yards, 120 yards. The rods itself will uh, are lovely to cast, to be fair. Very user friendly. I mean, if you want to wind into them and get right into the rod, no problem at all, they'll handle it. If you want to hit a bait overhead thump, spot on. If you want to do anything you want to do with it off the ground, I mean, they'll, they'll handle pretty much anything, I, I, I believe. Um, as I said, I'm not going to put 200 gram on them because they're only rated to 170, I believe. So um, it's one of them, but oh, I know they would handle it. You, could, you can pretty much tell with a rod. When, sometimes, a lot, some people will get this sort of gist, but when you pick up a rod and you put a five ounce lead on it and it's rated six ounces, it feels like you need a bigger lead and that's what that rod is when you when you cast that rod sometimes unless you like pendulum and get into the midsection you're feeling off the tip that's what it feels like but um i've been using sixes today and they've been f been fine like no difference at all so um yeah that one's out there now playing around with the uh, spider crabs so we'll go and get a, a drink and uh, sit back and watch a day go by so it's like the same, it's got to play around a little bit, and yeah. So, what I've done here now is I've made a pulley rig up 
um, just out of bits and pieces I had there really so the good thing about it I've still got my um, I've still got my uh, rig body for the um, up, up and over rig and I've also still got my trace there for my uh, for my pulley rig so what I can do now is I can simply nick that imp off there and then what I can do is put that on here like so and then what I can do is click this weight here into my imp like that and then I'm away what I find sometimes if you're getting really finicky bikes and that um, that they'll, that'll get in their mouth and if they go to take off it'll just hook up straight away just because of the of the um, of the rig but I've used I've got quite a long rig there so I can allow it but I've got a single crab bait on that now just to um, try, try and uh, intense a bigger fish out. Now, a lot of people ask me, with specimen, do you get bored? I mean, a lot of guys have come over from the cop side to see sea angling and that, and they, you, like, especially when I've done a bit of carp fishing, you do a bit of carp fishing at smaller ponds, get loads into loads of fish, and you turn up on the specimen lakes and you're waiting days sometimes to get fish. Um, it can be, a, sea fishing can be exactly the same when you're specimen hunting. It's, um, to me, it doesn't make no difference. Um, it's nice to sit here and catch fish all day, don't get me wrong. Um, but if you're if you're there, catch it on a lot of the marks, you'll get lo lots of fish and smaller quantities of fish. But there are marks, especially for where like we go for the blonde rays. I mean, I could go up Chesil really and t target like 20s and stuff like that. Do you ever see me up there? Not really. It's a place where you seem to get a lot of guys going because it's, it's an easy place to fish. But you've got the crowds there and you're sort of fighting over the same, same fish. Um, is it, will it give the chance of giving that monster? Possibly, yeah. Um, where I go is a little bit different. It's very secluded. It's, um, it's very hard to get to. Um, having said that, it, you've always got chance of 30 pounder. You've got a chance of British record fish. And you won't sit down there catching blonde after blonde after blonde or ray after ray after ray. It won't happen. I mean, there's been times and years gone by what's seen a lot of fish come in and stuff like that. But the only way you do it, you do it and know is if you're putting time in. But um, I would rather be sat down on the beach on a rock mark, specifically targeting that monster, and even if it means me blanking. Now, a lot of people won't get that. And I don't, I don't I, and to be honest, I, I feel in a way, from going where I was when I first started fishing into just enjoying fishing and going out and catching fish, as it turned my, 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 my hobby upside down a little bit, Possibly, yeah. I mean, um, I do enjoy going and catching fish and stuff like that. But to me, it's about those big, bigger fish now, which um, it's uh, unfortunately once you get it in your blood, it's hard to, it's hard to get out of it. And um, it's knowing what's out there. And the only way you're going to get get out there and get the fish that obviously a lot of guys want to do is is down to marks, guys. I mean, the marks are what make anglers. Without the marks and knowledge of the marks and stuff like that, you won't be catching fish and um, it's something which I believe is one of the most advanced skills you can have with angling is, is learning. Um, no matter what you're doing, and the, the good thing about it is even the guys who have been doing it for many, many years and still do it on a regular basis now, they still learn. They're, new, they're going to different marks, they're going to different coastlines, they're going to different, like, um, different, different regions, they're going to, diff going to broad, they're going all over the place and they're forever learning. And that's one good thing about sea angling is what I enjoy about it is you, have for you are forever learning. And um, it really is, it is a really good thing about the sport. But as the day, I could go down here now, I'm using slightly bigger hooks, so I'm not gonna hit into a lot of those smaller fish. But if I get a three pounder, will you land a bigger fish on a smaller hook? Yes, you would. Um, but I know like basically one of the smaller hooks, you don't do them in the extra sort of things that you've got a lot of bendy hooks. Now, if I'm fishing this sort of venue, if I'm fishing this clean beach, that doesn't make no difference to me. But for me personally, if I'm lifting a fish up out of that water, we haven't got a drop net or nothing here today, um, which is a bit of a, it's one of them. I'd rather have one. And the, well, the one I've got is telescopic and it's a bit of a beast to carry. And just because we were coming from work, I thought, you know what, I'm not gonna bother. And, and you can lift fish up, up out of the, you know what I mean? I've done it before, but I would, especially on a stronger hook. I mean, you get a, um, you get a extra, so you get a Sakuma Manta, for example, and then you get a Sakuma Manta Extra, there is a difference between those two hooks. One's slightly thicker gauge and, and a lot stronger. And, and I always go for the extra, if I'm honest, especially when I'm going ray fishing and stuff like that. I mean, I think you need it, guys, you know what I mean? It's just, um, the last thing I want, personally, 
is any weak points in my tackle. I want to know that everything I'm using is, is capable to stand up from the job, from the swivels to the knots to the beads to whatever it is. And I feel one of the most important things about all of it, no matter what rod you're using or what lines you're using or what reels you're using or what rigs that you're using, the main, main thing is your hook because that's what you're catching the fish with and i mean if you're using products which don't work or bend out i know and i know i know guys who've gone fishing before and bent certain products out and stuff you know what i mean on fish i remember luke johns he went up to mine i believe um he rang me and said do you, do you know where i could go and catch a fish i've got the little one with me and i got a chance of getting a good one i said yeah no worries put him on this spot and um he's literally out of the car fishing he's cast out second cast on he looked into what he believed was a blonde and uh, as he was trying to lever it it was running with the tide and uh, it basically strengthened his hook out and i've seen it before i've had it before with certain hooks and stuff but i believe that you pay for what you get get in 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 uh, fishing unfortunately a lot of people obviously there's only a certain price they would they put on products what they want to pay for um and there's a, at the end of the day it is what it is i mean you've got low budget range rods which will last you six months maybe 12 months of using them every day not long at all um if you're going for like mid-range rods you've got some fantastic uh, mid-range rods on the market now and um, obviously you've got the high-end rods as well so there's a mixture of what you want out of it and obviously from from me personally it's quality and um it's something which i don't know is it turns into an addiction <laughs> it really does but i've sort of like calmed it down a little bit now if i'm honest with my sort of like addiction for angling because i mix it in and there was stuff i can do at home like with the facebook stuff i'm running the competition and that now you know what i mean i'm doing editing and stuff like that and and it's nice and i do enjoy doing it but i've got to find that medium where everybody in my life gets a chance with me as well and not just the sea because it turns in especially with club fishing and that, it turns into like manic where i just want to be by the sea constantly and i think there's more to life than that guys i mean you got to, you want to share your experience and that with others and you want to also obviously share it with your family and friends and stuff and uh yeah i do miss it i do i sit down here now and just think to myself you know what i mean i would rather i'd be i'd love to be at a certain time of year on that certain mark and that you know what i mean and just putting in the time in and when that rod tip goes over and that reel goes screaming off and the adrenaline and excitement what runs for your body with that i mean like that blonde i had that 27 pound blonde i mean it's something i was talking to joseph about the other day he said do you remember like the catch and i said i remember every single thing about it from baiting up to casting out to watching my reel go the whole whole the whole like story of catching i, I remember to this day I, I still feel it in a way and i think as anglers we that we all live off that and um, it's one thing about angling, no matter what type of angling you do, I think it's something about it which keeps you coming back. And I mean, like last year I had a, a big break from angling and um, I think I'm, I think I started not feeling depressed, but I just didn't, I mean, I didn't feel happy with, with going to work every day, coming home and there was something missing. So I was playing a bit of golf and that at the time and stuff like that. And I didn't even realise what it was. And then I went and done a fishing trip and I, and I knew and it was just this. I mean, you come fishing and everything goes away. The only thing you concentrate on is your mates next year, having a laugh, baiting up and trying to catch a few fish. I mean, that's all it is about. You get, you get a fish, take a picture, you weigh it. If you're going to eat it, you take it home. If you're going to return it, you take it, put it back. And um, that's the only joy. That's the only, everything else doesn't matter. Bills, the politics, the world going upside down, everything else. I mean, it doesn't matter. All that matters for that couple of hours, what you're doing is this rod. And it's an escape from life in a way, isn't it? And I think it's, um, it's something what we all use for that sort of thing. And I think it helps with a lot of people's mental health problems and stuff like that as well. I mean, I've spoke to loads of people over the time what said, Andy, I love watching your YouTube videos and you've inspired me to go fishing and stuff. And, um, and it's certainly helped with the struggles I get through life because unfortunately, guys, life's a roller coaster. It really is. I mean, you've got your ups and downs and unfortunately with it, you've just got to realize that and you've got to enjoy the times that you're you're up up in the on in the world and then obviously when the times you're down you've you've just got to struggle through and life gets better you know what i mean there's been a few times in my life where i think to myself i just don't i've, I've had enough like you know what i mean i just it's just it's not worth it i mean at, at christmas a lot of people will know this but um i had a, I had a bit of a rough time i found out my dad got cancer and um he had cancer in the throat and cancer in the back of his ear and unfortunately, he, um, it could have been a case where he would have not been able to eat properly. So he'd have had to have all of his foods pumped into his stomach. 
and um, obviously he's, he's my dad in the, the day and no one wants to like have that going on for a member of no anybody let alone a family member and um, his, his decision at the time was if he had to do that for the rest of his life he didn't want to have the operation and stuff which made me made, made me like question it but I, I put myself in that, that that perspective if it was me and I would have been exactly the same the other way around I mean it's 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 you know I mean you, you live all your life like being able to eat and stuff like that and then all of a sudden you've been you you, you have your world turned upside down with to the fact where you can't eat anymore and um you're not the people you're not the person you were and I think that's to do with old age and that but it, I really struggled with it I've got to be honest I've not had that sort of experience before and um it really hit me and uh it sort of like brought things He's all right now. He's had the operation, bless him, and uh, he's 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 pulled through, which is good. He can eat eat again now and stuff like that. And um, I think we all take our bodies for granted. And I think, that especially with some of the stuff I've done with like energy drinks and stuff like that over the years, you go and fishing like that. You know I mean, it's not affecting you then, but later on in life it does. And a lot of youngsters will be watching this video now, going, "Andy, what the hell are you on about?" But trust me, guys, some of you older, older lads and some of the older anglers will will know what I'm talking about. And um, it's about educating the youth in it and i know for one that my older older generation like my my elders in life and like people i looked up to and that used to t say to me you know this is what you need to do and where you were going wrong and that you used to go what in one ear and out the other but unfortunately you don't realize until it's too late and um it's about enjoying life in it and I, I believe it's it's about your it's about working you work, 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 work to, to get things in life. That's the only way you can do it. I mean, no one's going to give you nothing in life. You've got, to, you've got to go out there and take it. If you want something, you've got to go and get it. And uh, that's the, exactly the same as when it comes to angling, guys. A lot of you young, younger lads and that watching the videos and that seeing the fish, nice fish and that being pulled out. It, you don't just get it overnight. It's ed, it's it's ed, educated. And and yes, the good thing about it now, you've got a lot of anglers who are willing to take other people under their wings and show them different bits and pieces and stuff like that. But it's about respecting them anglers as well. Also, you know what I mean? If it's, you've got a, you've got someone which is willing to take you out and that, listen and learn a little bit from him. You know what I mean? And and, and pick up a bit in that. And if he's like sharing venues and stuff like that with you. And stuff like that just keep it keep it under your width and just have, have the respect and then one day you'll be able to do exactly the same and I, and I feel that's a big part of angling where you should be able to um, pass it on and stuff but uh, I sort of rambled on there for about 10 minutes and I but I think it's a 12 minute video clip but boys and girls at the end of the day lovely day we're down on the beach we're down on the rocks and uh, we're having a go I have got a bit of slack line there now so we bring him in let's have a go See what's on. See the where the sand's been digging into my line. Just go down a little bit. Of fish. Huh? Ray. Joseph might have the first fish of the day. He's fishing one for Ray's here. So uh, I'll see if he's uh, see how he's getting on. Look, come on, let's go over. Keep it up, mate. I'm coming over. Keep it up high. If it's heavy like that, it could be. Or it could be a big monster fawny. There it is, it's a crab. Right guys, as you can see, this is what we've got to put up with down here.
What was that? No way! Joseph just snapped his rod. Way! He's dug himself in here, isn't he? He's got his nose dug in. Whoa! Right, I'm gonna do. There he is there. This is a spider crab. If any of you have not seen one before. We'll get him up because Joseph just snapped his uh, reducer on his rod. I heard it crunch. Go on and pull him up then, mate. So, folks, this. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Is a spider crab. Okay. Unfortunately, we get a lot of these things. And uh, especially when it becomes like sort of time to go and target like the small eyes and spotties and, and blonde sometimes, we get nailed with these. And uh, sometimes, especially on Cheswell and that, they're like carpets along the floor, like massive. But uh, as you can see, he's lost, uh, he's lost one. So I think he's probably seen someone in the past. But we're going to put this boy back to fight another day. I mean, uh, it's a sea creature and it needs its respect at the same time. It's been out of the water now for a couple of uh, seconds, so we're going to get him put straight back. But um, yeah, they can be a nightmare because they've got very sharp claws what cut through trace lines. So when you're fishing for rays and that, it's not too bad. But when you start fishing for the likes of place and stuff, a 20 pound main line, they snip right through it. But um, I'm going to try and get as close as I can to this water's edge. Whee, quite slippery here. Yeah? And then I'm going to chuck him right back. There he goes. See him? He'll sink to the bottom and then he'll sort of play around then. But uh, yeah, there it is. Star Old Bay, guys. Star Old Bay. See if we can get some more crabs out. Right. Let's get this one here. In. Okay. I'm going to use a crab up while I'm here today because it's I've had it all week and uh, it's on its way out the last thing I want to do is be wasting some crab I put the other ones out of the freezer today as well just in case I started fishing which I wish I left in now for the smuts but there you go I'd have to use them up I have to use them up good thing about where we are to, at the minute once it starts going darkness and you think you're, you're out, of, out of luck with a place you can put other rigs on so you can start putting some ray rigs on and stuff like that and you've, all, you've got a real good chance of getting into into a few you know what i mean but um let's have a look here yeah so i've got a couple of crabs there left i've got four i'm going to use them all up today i think because uh I can't, they're not going to they're still alive which is good which uh that one's there i'm going to basically cut around cut the lung out around again cut the lung out Joseph's snapped his reducer which is not good is that fish? no oh wait oh it's coming around does it? I'll get mine in now mate right so what I try to do I've got some hard parts on here like, because I don't need massive baits I mean you'd play a play with that a bit more if you were trying to keep a bit more of the crab but well, not really so I'm just going to basically put the put it around the hook like that okay so it's a crab and I'm basically going to get the bait elastic once again bring them around like that and then huh never one nightmare Joseph is definitely getting into the spider crabs. He's in that deep bit of a deeper water there he is at the minute. And uh, I feel he's getting uh, he's getting a punish. Joe, you might be worth if you want to get away from him, come in, get a thingy down here. Yeah. It's de slightly deeper water there though. Right, 
Right, there you go. Get this one casted out a minute and uh, see if we can get something out. I don't know what to do here. I am. I'm going to go back to the bomb lead, I think. Back to the bomb lead. Let's get one out. Hey. It's in your head, in your head. Zombie, zombie. Can't ask for much better than that. I'll tell you what, that felt lovely. I'm gonna bring this one in here now. I have a fish here. Got a fish, Joe. I think that's a place. Feels like a place. Don't want to speak too soon, but. Staying deep. What's it? Woohoo! We got our first one of the year. We have our first fish of the year. I'll tell you what, that rod felt lovely with that. I t <laughs> you know. Um, at the end of the day, it's a travel rod, guys. So you've got to give it its respect it deserves, being with that. But it was stiff enough. But here we have. It's not massive. It's not that big one we wanted, all right? But having said that, can you do that? Just unclip it if you can, mate. No, up the top. Two seconds, actually. Wait, if you hold the fish. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Just, oh, oh, that'll be right there, won't it? So, there it is, look at that. That is our first fish of the day. Nice place, took a pure rag bait. I get Joseph to give it a quick photo and then we'll get it back to fight another day. But that's what we're after guys, look at that. Hopefully you get his granddad next. Fish on. You need to lift it so we get it over that rough ground, Joe. It could be a place, mate. 
you get big place um, slack line in you like that. Get it up though, get it up. Get it up, up, up. I think that is the ray, isn't it? I don't know. It seems to be fighting a bit up there. No, you got a bullet, mate. Keep it coming this way. Got a bullet, got a nice bullet. Here you go, guys. Joys of place fishing. I've had them up to like about just under 12 pound here. All right, come in this way, come in this way. Look at that one there! Here, let me hold him behind the head a minute. Look at that. Watch, watch yourself because it hooks. <laughs> the bullet catcher. What was that on? Sand deal. Yeah. You get some nice ones down here, mate. You get some nice ones. There it is. So we are. Nice bullet. We're not going to break no record, it's probably about six pound, five pound, four pound, four and a half, five pound. I would think I'd get it five, he's got to be at least five. He's got some girth to it. I like a bit of girth, let me be able to. <laughs> uh, like that. How would you tell the difference between a dogfish and a, and a bullet still sip? Yep, so anybody watching this video, if you get smaller bullets, you want to tell the difference. That's the nose you get on them compared to the dogfish, all right? But um, we'll get a pit, quick picture. If you hold them out a minute, just to show the guys what you've got. Brilliant scrap, these guys, on um, on 20 pound mainline. A lot of people targeting big. I've been lucky enough to have a lot of my big ones raying dirty water, but that it is. Look at that. Stonking little bullet there. Prime. Get a quick picture and I'll get him back. Well, there he is, Mr. Joseph. He's going to walk down there. Watch those rocks, mate. As you can see, we've both got studded waders on here. Uh, waders? Studded wellies on here. The reason being, these rocks can get very slippery and they can be deadly. And the uh, last thing you want to do is that. But he's going to go as close as he can to the water. And then he'll drop him down right about there. And the husk will swim down. Look, it's, it's a joy to see these. He's gone right in underneath. But it'd be nice to see him going off out. But there he is. One bullet. And the bull, bullet master of the day. Woohoo! I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bring one in here now. Just to bait up another rig, really. No. I'll leave that one there. Nothing on mine yet. Fish on, Joe? No. I'll tell you what, I just loaded right that rod right up. I just done a uh, layback cast and um, it flew, and I mean flew. They, um, I hate to say it guys, I like them, I really do, I mean, I never thought I'd be one to say I like the travel rod, but there would be times, and I wish other brands done them, like the likes of uh, Century or Zulcron, might be something to look forward to the future, because that there is a work of art, it's the only way of describing it, and I say a lot about the rods I like, and um, it's only the first time out with it, so I, it's probably a bit too soon to say that, but they... Um, I'm very impressed with them, guys. For a six-piece travel rod, to just have the pulling power that rod's got. I mean, I didn't even feel the place on it, if I'm honest. Um, a little bit in the tip section, but it, it, it is a bit of kit. I mean, for, especially fishing overseas. Really, anything on clean ground, you can play a fish. Um, and I would say suited up to the, around the hundred pound mark. I would, you know, I mean, I'd quite happy to fish for anything in these these waters with it, without a set from common skate. Um, it's just, uh, it's just a lovely bit of kit, <laughs> and I know full well because 
I think, so I've been told, that they you can't get them anymore. That they've been discontinued. I'm, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I was told that the other day. So I've, I'm, I know they're not on none of the new catalogues, so I don't I believe. Um, I could be wrong, I don't know, so don't take that for, for wording, but I know there's still places where you can get them. Um, so I would get all the Jerry's and Morecambe and have a word with Chris uh, for, to see if, uh, see if they've got any in stock. And um, if, for those of you who are looking for a travel rod to take an holiday in that, what a bit of kit. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna fish with them in the UK for a little bit, I think. Not everywhere, because I love my Zolkron 435s and I love my T9s at the minute. But um, if I'm going anywhere, I've got to go up and down cliffs and I've got long walks, like I have today a little bit, they were perfect. I mean, they took me probably an extra five minutes to put together correctly. Um, does it make any difference? No, it was a lovely, enjoyable walk, 45 minute walk, for, uh, we'll say 30, between 30 and 40 minute walk. Um, and everything fat fitted on my rucksack. The only thing I had to carry was my cool bag. So for placing and that, it's, it's perfect really. Um, yeah, what can I say? I can't big them up anymore. As I said, it's not a sponsored video. Um, if anything, it's something I wouldn't normally do, but you've got to give it the credit they deserve because they are, uh, they are a six-piece bit of kit, and I will call them the six-piece monster. Okay, folks. So I'm going to bake this one up a minute. Um, what shall I put on it? I don't really know what's... What shall I put a bit of black on it, shall I? Just add a bit of black to it. Mixing a bit of black in. With this uh, rag. Let's make it a little bit uh, interesting. It's playing around a little bit to be honest. If I'm gonna to totally tell the truth, <laughs> and I will. Um, the last bit of line will come in because it's like buried over the back there and it's like cutting through the sand. I didn't wash the lamp line off my uh, the sand off the line with my fingers as it was pulling through. So I thought I'd get away with it with cast. I went to cast it, and the sand caught it. Luckily, I managed to get it, stopping from birds nesting. But it dropped about ten meters in front of me. But I managed to get it back. So uh, it's just brand new crab bait and rag. So I've just tipped it with a bit of black now, just to uh, stop from wasting the bait completely. But uh, what a sausage! What a sausage! Right. I'm going to blast this out now, try and blast it out, so uh, if I do it again, I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, luckily I won't film it. All right, let's have a go. Exactly again, same again there. Lay back cast. Good thing about lay back is if you let that ledge drop, it's um, it picks it up and just compresses the let uh, compresses the um, the rod. It's ideal for places like this, really. I need to practice it a bit more. Like as I said before, if you're using the same, if you're using the same cast. For most of your fishing, you're always going to find that in you. But uh, I'm going to get this one in here now as well. <laughs> Feel a bit of rain in the air, guys. Let's hope it don't, because I ain't got a rain raincoat with me. That 
that bait's not been had either. Yeah, a little bit of rain in the air, a little bit of rain. So lads, so ladies, we are um, just approaching high tide now. And uh, I've had a little bite on my pulley rig. Slight pull down, little something, something like playing around with it. And uh, there it goes again. So I'm gonna have a little investigation in a minute. As I said, this rod really, it's, um, it's power all the way up. It's just a tip going now. I'll let Joseph get down in there. I'm trying to be a little bit playful with this. I can feel this a little bit more now, this fish. Give it a better account for itself anyway. We'll start diving now. Don't know what it is, it's, it's definitely there, it's definitely a fish. He's trying to dive, just keeping it up. Shock leader coming through, rig coming through. And it is another place. So we can ask for guys. I mean, as I said, the, the rod, I'll just pass that to Joseph to hold him in it. But that's on a pulley rig now. And to be fair, worm every time. Not massive fish, but um, that was black rag and tipped off with crab but as you can see the colouring in that fish is uh, perfect shame the sun's gone in it's quite dull but uh, yeah we'll get a quick photo we'll get it back to fight another day Joseph's just been kind enough to uh, unhook him for me just got a little photo look it's not massive fish guys but you can see there now look at that it's uh, pure perfection just in miniature size that one but we're going to go and get him back to fight another day and then uh, let's see if we can get another one out. It'd just be nice to get Joseph to get one out now, really. But uh, the light's not, we ain't got much light, light left, really. I reckon we've got probably an hour and then we'll make our way. But this is a time now, really, where you expect to see a few fish out if we're going to see them. But unfortunately, they're all small. There he goes, look, straight back, fight another day. Sea Angle Adventures on it. That one there, ladies and gentlemen, was on a pulley rig. Okay, as I said before, you just got to play around a little bit sometimes to try and find a few fish. I mean, they're not going to always come to you. And uh, that's what I've basically done there then. So I've got, it's quite a big pulley rig. At the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not, not targeting small fish like that. Um, I want something bigger, so I don't want it spooked off. But as you can see, the rag's playing a, pl a blimer here today. And uh, yeah, it's what we want, what we want. The attractors always come in handy. I'm not necessarily going to do anything like that worm except from sliding him up the hook. Some of the people will take him off. Do you know what? It's just being lazy, in it? Come on, Webby. Sort it out. Yeah, I am going to take it off because it's just being lazy. So I'll pull down like that. Get it all down the shank. You know what I'll do then is pull around and the uh, secu little secuma hook there. Right, let's get another one on the go then. There's one earlier on. Got a bit of a bigger worm there now.
Okay, so what I have been doing, and I'll show you now. I've been getting the crabs. Got one down here. Crabs leg, all right. And all I'm simply doing is pulling that out through. Okay. And then basically breaking the shell off it like that right and it's left me the inside of the shell so basically all i'm going to do then is where my hook point is i'm going to put that straight down the top of it if i'm using crab i always like doing that it hides the hook but also at the same time you've got a lovely bit of a bit of scent there and the tractor on the top there pull these beads down pull them down like so Nice little rag bait there, ready to rock and roll. See if we can get one out. So I said, guys, it's on a pulley rig. Little conny weight. There's nothing spectacular to it. Pretty easy stuff. And uh, hopefully you can see you a few fish out. So to be fair, if anyone was looking for venues, I'm at, uh, you know, pretty obvious where I am at the moment. I'm at Star Road Bay, Salcom. And... Um, all the way up through the main estuary you'll get place all the outer marks all the way up around so it's sort of like stretch the coast towards b sand slapton you know, all areas of that will see see fish and um, not necessarily got to come off the rocks and that we do it nine times out of ten just to get out of the way and just have a a bit of a nice day secluded area got your place to yourself you know what i mean um i, I prefer rock fillet fishing if i'm honest it's not uh it's not necessarily i like, don't mind beach fishing but i do prefer to be off the rocks fishing into deeper water and um yeah it's, it's one of them not for everyone a lot of people like to be on the beaches and like nice easy walks down and that but uh for the views and the spectacular scenery and stuff like that you really can't you can't really can't fault it so i'm gonna get this one out now and then uh we can uh, hopefully see another fish out so that's fish number two for me it'd be nice to see joseph get one out now if i'm honest um at the end of the day we're all down here trying to get a couple of place out he's had a bullet so far so he's had a fish i'm just hoping one goes on his place rig i mean it's quite early still but uh we've had two out which is good so hopefully we can see another right let's get this other one out then so we put me phone in properly so I'm just going to do a layback cast as well, guys, again. I mean, the, both of those fish have come the t from the tide line. So they haven't come in close. They've come distance, and I can see the tide line at the moment. It's, I would say it's around 100 yards, 100, 100 yards this. But your trouble is, you're casting with no weight room to cast. So you've got to try and load it up, really. But um, let's give it a go. Pull the line round that. Have a bite coming on, guys. Just pull the tension on it. Let's pull your rig straight away. Keep slacking me off. The trick is sometimes to sit in your hands a little bit because it could be playing around, but that was a big drop of slack. I'm hoping it's on there. I'm just gonna wait slightly for that next tap. And I know it's pretty much on there. I know it's pretty much on there, the reason being because I've bat blasted it to the horizon that way. And uh, the slack's dropped all the way in. There you go, it's quite tight now. It's 
the waiting game sometimes. You just got to be patient, and you. Know. The trouble is, I'm not a patient man. <laughs> I think it's, it's either going southwesterly slightly, the wind, because we are properly sheltered from where we are at the minute. And it, so I find this mark really, really good in the southwesterly breeze. Um, you've got to be careful because if the swells are very big, sometimes these rocks can get covered. So you've really got to know, you've got to know the area and know the venue to be able to fish it in those conditions. I would never ever recommend it coming out here um, in rough seas, especially at night, because it, it, one minute you could be here, the next minute it could be covered with water. And um, it's that dangerous. Fish? You see the white horses coming from the right hand side of them and I can see them coming pulling around. Nope, let's get, leave it for a five minutes, have a drink and we'll come back to it. So, it's getting a tad chilly. The wind is, uh, I'm not sure what it's doing. I think it's going more westerly, but it's coming overhead at the minute. But I'm getting a few little taps on here. I've had a couple of bites, but I'm not sure what it is. I'm just going to bring it in now. It's been going a little while. So uh, it's all you can do really. Can't feel nothing on there. Don't feel nothing on there. Someone's been playing with it anyway. So uh, I'm gonna put another bait up on there now. We ain't got lot long left to be fair. But um, I don't know what I'm gonna go for here. Do you know what? I'm gonna go a bit of crab. So I've got two crab there left over. Joseph, here, catch this. Bit of crab for Joseph as well. Share them out, share them out. All right? Last two, Matt. That's what we call teamwork. Got you, in ya? That's what it's about. So, we will... Do you know what? I got these from Tackle Trader last week and they're still going strong. I can't believe it, to be fair. I'm not sure when they got them in, but they... Um, I've kept them in the fridge at temperature. I've been a bit lazy with them as well because I've not even given them any water. Normally I'll just wait and then just freeze them down. But um, no. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm lazy. I'm going to cut this off instead of pulling it. All right. So all the hard bits are just cut off. Like so. Some people will cut the lungs. I will for this occasion. Okay, so you're left with a crab like that. Now, fishing a pulley rig. So I'm going to move these beads back up, and then I've got my uh, I've got my little bead there, and then I've got that there. So what I can do now is get rid of all that worm. I'm going to put this crab bait on here. Now, it's a big old crab bait, this. So, it might be too big for a place. 
but it is what it is. If I get form, fawny on it, oh no, won't I? Um, but we're not mucking around, we're here for four pound, aren't we? So, only one way to find out. So, all the orange goodness coming out of the crab. It's not a massive bait, but it is, um, you say that, there's no difference of putting that on there for a two pound flounder, is there? So I know a two pound flounder would smash that down. So exactly the same, we were, uh, we're looking for place. And that, to me, looks bob on, bob on. All right, so I've got that one there, which I'm gonna basically put down around the top to stop the crab from going up. Got a few attractors there if I need to. Um, I'm gonna put them down anyway. Ah, it's a lovely bait. Lovely bait. So I'm gonna do exactly the same now, pulley rig. I'm gonna uh, literally get him blasted out to the horizon. I'm pretty running short of bait here at the minute, if I'm honest. I mean, uh, it's been it's not been a bad session. It's always early. You've got a chance of blanking, and it, it really is a case chance of blanking. I mean. It's, um, you see a lot of the good anglers go early to get on them early and get that big one out the way because um, a lot of people won't put the time and effort into doing it. And uh, it's a shame really, because it, it's most of the time it's down to catch reports. That's the only reason it gets, people will just sit there and wait for people to go and put the hard work in and see a few pulled out and then they'll win it in mass numbers then. But by that, that time, hopefully, you're out the way of it. But for me, I'm not really that bothered anymore, if I'm honest. I mean, if normal years and I wanted to come down and put loads of time into doing it, I wouldn't put the video out until a couple of months' time. Um, but to be fair, I'm not really that... You know what I mean, I don't, I don't do the club fishing like I did. And uh, it, it's just a nice to get out with Joseph and uh, get a few fish and that. I mean... Uh, I'm thinking about going up to Brighton in the next couple of weeks to give that a go for a place. I mean, it's a lot more prolific with uh, bigger fish and stuff up and out there. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But we also got an Isle of Wight trip, which I am looking very much forward to. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a few trips and stuff I haven't done this year. I think um, I'm gonna go. I want to tr try all in Alderney, something I've always wanted to do. And I think with these travel rods now, it's perfect for it. And um, yeah, I'm going to try uh, Isle of Wight, get over there with the boys and that. So yeah, anyway, let's get this one out. I'm talking too much. I've been thinking about you. Oh yeah. All right, Joseph. And lay it down. What's that noise? <laughs> Do you know what? Getting into that now. It, that layback cast is lovely, but you've got to get the timing right. If you don't get the timing right, but when you do get the timing right, it just compresses the rod, and especially in areas like that, you need it. You definitely need it. But um, no, I've got to say, guys, I am really, really impressed with these rods. I'm not just saying it. Um, time would be the tester, really, wouldn't it? But as I said, it's... It's been nice. Let that lead settle a minute. Well in, well in. Joe's up there casting now. Whack. So one Joseph. Young Joseph. He's tight there now. He's tight there now, right? Gonna get this one here in. See if there's anything on him. I don't think there is. He's been out there a little while now. This one's got gripper on him, I think.
So, that's sand again. Well, that one's not very good. I'm going to use the rest of my blacks up on this next casting, guys, and I think that's it for the day. But uh, it's been a good day. As I said, it's early one on the rocks, but you've got to be in it to win it. Okay. So, blacks there now. So we, we were undecided what to do tomorrow. But I've got to be honest, with the way things are looking, um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get any worm in time, if I'm honest. So I think we'll probably go down and have a go for a spotty. I think so. I think that's the, the best thing to do. When you've got a couple of marks to go and have, one, have a go at one, I mean, um, it's now sort of time, best time to go for them, really. <laughs> like... This sort of time now, the uh, before the small light starts turning up and stuff, you've got a chance of getting some really nice, nice fish out. Winter time, I'd say, like January and February is really the, your big time for the big, big ones, really. But um, B sands, there's a tip for you. Every like January and February, when it's like you've had enough of white in fishing and stuff like that, you get down B sands, get the tides right, get the weather right and just get down there and have a go and I guarantee you put a few sessions in down in there now using sand and bluey you'll pull a you pull a decent fish out it's um it's easy fishing isn't it at the end of the day straight out the straight out your car straight in onto the beach and uh it does throw up some really good fish go show you it's not all about going down to all these like cliff marks and and stuff like that all the time sometimes it's uh sometimes it, it, your fish good fishing can be right out the back of your car just done a little sausage there now on a black lug and then i'm gonna uh i'm basically gonna pull that one down there like so I'm just going to fish that plain black, I think. I think that's the best thing to do with that, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I can't, yeah, I'll, that's how I've, Yeah, why not? So I'll put a bit of... Bl Go on. Go on, Webby, stop being lazy. All right, so what I've done is just basically got a, a fillet of sand eel. And then what I've done is I've put that on the eel itself on the uh, black lug itself, sorry. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a bit of bait elastic around that now, just to hold it together. That little bit of fish sometimes can make all the difference. But uh, yeah, I've been doing well with that pulley rig. So, uh, oh my word. I've just dropped slack. I've got slack all over the place. Slack all over the place. Is it gonna go? Is it gonna go? Nope, don't wanna go. All right. I'm going to get this one out now, guys, anyway. I have got enough for another couple of cars, to be fair. See how it goes, isn't it? Right. So. Lovely, just little compact bait, ready to get smashed to the horizon.
Okay. So what I'm basically doing now is I'm, as I said before, I'm doing what you know as a layback cast. Because I haven't got room to swing the lead up like that, I'm, I'm doing the, the lead sideways. But um, basically, as it comes up and it goes to drop, I'm turning it into the cast. So basically, I'm hitting the lead as it falls, which basically compresses the rod. But when you hit it right, it can be quite rewarding. So where am I casting now? I'm casting over there, aren't I? So I want to aim this way, really. So I want to go up, down, down. Plenty, honestly. You, uh, as long as you're into that tide line, what I find here, you've got you've got a good, really good chance of catching a few. Whee! Dancing. So I'm just basically putting enough tension on the tips of the line so I've got bite detection. As I said, these rods are a bit too much for placing really, but I just wanted to get out and have a play with them because it's, um, as I said, it's, it's, it saves having to jaunt all the, all the gear around all the time. I mean, I'll show you before we go, but it's, it's literally bang, bang, straight. You can literally got the two rods on top of the, on the, the Century rucksack. You've got the, I'm, I'm gonna get a little fold up way tripod. My tripod was in Rob, uh, Joseph's bag. He, he kindly carried it for me because it fitted in with his tripod. But um, I, I would, uh, I can put, put that on the top, fold a little tripod, put it on the top. Everything's on the back of me. And I've got a literally cool bag, holding this cool bag and you're, away you go. I mean, you'll have a look at this, look. I've done a video the other day, but this is it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a new century cool bag, uh, the rucksack. You can get the cool bag, what goes with it. I've just been a bit of a tackle tart, if I'm honest. Um, I went for the lot. <laughs> I like the rig wallets anyway, but the real cases, I've, I've got a couple just because I, um, I'm not very good at looking after my gear sometimes. And I'm chucking all the reels in the bag and I just scratch them up. And I've got a pair of Fathoms now, which I'm trying to keep immaculate. But it's got, I've went through it the other day. It's got all your zips. I've got my, my um, woolly hat on there, that side there at the minute with like a rain cover, what I've, what I've took off another bag. It's the only downfall I've got with it. One minute, the line's just gone a bit slack. Need to watch that quickly. A lot of slack went then. No bite anyway. But it's got a really nice front compartment. So I've been keeping my GoPro and that in there. Just so the GoPro fits in there. And then the, the top compartment is, is quite good because it's got... Um, I've been keeping the night light in that in there. So tonight I've got my headlight in there now. But I've got literally... It fits loads of stuff. My scales and that are in this one here, I believe. So this one here. Yeah, in here. So I've got my scales in there. And then... Um, all my like scissors and bits and pieces in there. I mean, for the money, you can't go wrong. And it all matches, you know what I mean? All your rigs are in there together and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much away you go. But I, um, at the end of the day, guys, it's about promoting good stuff. And the old good thing about me not doing no sponsorship anymore, I'm able to like do bits and pieces for different companies and show like what works and stuff. But it's not stuff I get given. I mean, I pay, pay good money for some of this stuff. You know what I mean? From tackle shops and stuff. It's, uh, it's just stuff which I, I sort of same as those rods really. I, I was looking for a pair of rods to take to Mallorca and then take over to um, T Tenerife. <coughs> so I was looking for something what could go in the, the suitcase, which I can just take on holiday when I want to, and it's easy. But then I was, when I was speaking to Mark about them, I thought, and I tried them, I, to be fair, I'd fish, I'm quite happy fish everywhere around there with, with those rods. I mean, especially where I've got room to wind them up and out. They're a bit too much for placing, if I'm honest. 
but um, they're not meant for that, are they? They're meant for going abroad and like having like fish and that. So, yeah. But um, we'll do a few more trips with them and uh, see what we can get out. But uh, yeah, back to fishing. Start putting, start putting some more gear right away now. So it's uh, already. To be honest, I was quite impressed with those little weights I picked up from Southwest Sea Baits today. I mean, they're six ounces, and the ones I normally use are these ones here, and I quite like these. But these ones here feel slightly heavier. I don't know why, but um, I think the other ones are a bit more bulky. I don't know. I do like the grooves on them, though, but I do like them. They're really nice sleds. Seem to work today, doesn't it? But at the end of every session, guys, rubbish bag. And it's something what I can't promote enough because um, obviously you left over bits of crab and stuff like that. You're not going to uh, take with you. The worm I've got left there, and uh, fish bait for the uh, seagull sweet. But apart from that, all the newspaper in there, along with uh, any ever leftover rubbish I've got, will go back into my rucksack here now. And I'll take it home and put it in a bin because it helps keep our coastlines clean and tidy. So I'm just literally packing down now, guys. I've uh, I've got a little bit of worm there, so I'm gonna I am gonna use the worm up. I reckon I've got enough for one more cast with that, if I'm honest. But I'm just packing packing everything else away because it's obviously I've got to put the rods down as well now. But um, no, it's been a good day. So we've seen so far, we've seen two plates. Um, we've seen a bullus, so it's not been it's not been the, the trip we were really after with that big one, but it's also been a productive session, and that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. Isn't it? As long as you go out, I mean, I think with the cost of baiting that these days, I think it's just um, it's something what you need, isn't it? The last thing you need to be doing is spending all that money to go fishing because it, it can be quite costly by the time you put fuel and bait and everything in these days now, isn't it? But um, it's always nice to catch a few fish. My right hand side rod, rod keeps dropping slight slack and then tighten up again. I'm thinking a spider crab if I'm honest. But um, hopefully not. We'll get into it now and see if, see if it's a fish on or what. Okay guys, well that's the end to our fantastic day. Uh, it's been a good few hours on the rocks. As I said, it's not the specimens we're after. A couple of fish out. But uh, you can't ask for much more than that really. And you? At least something took the bait. So I'm going to pack these down now. Take this one down first. Saying that. Take this one, yeah, go on in. I'm gonna take this one down first. These power handles are lovely. The Gomez power handles literally transform reels, they really do. I mean, it widens it out, I've got loads more cranking power on this now. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting on the raising out with it, if I'm honest. A bit too much for what I'm doing here now with, but... Let's get down here and get this rod in. Lovely. Bait still intact as well. Look, look out for a crab bait. It's just, it's just wasted, isn't it? I if I can get that up up, up there to you, look. Look at that. It's just wasted. Oh, uh, can't win them all. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put that rod down there a minute. Just gonna show you how easy it is really to pack these away. Just on one rod. I won't do both rods because once you've seen one, you've seen it all, haven't you? <laughs> all right let's get this packed away okay then so what i'm gonna do let's bring that rod up terrible for that especially with this because i'm not sure what eyes are on it i don't want to ruin the eyes so if i can bring them right down through that'd be all right
Get the rag down. So, that's the first reel that can go in the box. So it's a simple case of getting one of these out here like that. Okay, I'll do it in order. So what I tend to do is take the first one off first. Where can I put these? I don't want to get these damaged. I'm gonna to have to take the other section off first. Right, then I'll put it in the first one here, like that. And then what I'll do with these, I am gonna keep that there. I shouldn't have done that really. And then I'm gonna go out there like that. So next section, out there like that, which is the next section. Out there like that, which is the next section. Out like like that, which is the next section. And then I'll just put them in order. So they fold up like that, straight down through. Like that. In like so. In like that. Look at that. How hard that can that be? And then basically what you do there then is fold it over like so. And then you can roll it, all right? So there's like a there's like a tie on here now, but you can roll it around. I'm gonna roll it that way. Like that. And you've got these little strings here then, which lets you come round like so. Like that. And that's it. That'll go on top there now. Do you know what? Let's do it properly, can't him? Let's bring this one in and we can uh, we can just pack it all down. You can see well how it all goes together and how lightweight it really is. What a view. <laughs> what a view. Okay. So, same again. If there's a bit of weed has come through or what, but on a big spring tide in the bay next to me, you can see a, a wreck. There's a story behind that wreck. You can look up on Google. And there's that one. Exactly the same process. Only difference is I'm gonna start at the top and work myself way down now. <laughs> I don't wanna really damage the rod or mark the rod. All right, get, get some scissors a minute. There you go. So most of you probably turned this video off by now because it's only seeing me packed down. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is. And especially without that big tripod there, everything's on your back. So a lot of the cliff marks I go to, it's safety as well, guys, because it, sometimes it can be quite challenging. I'll put that reel there a minute. It can be quite challenging going up and down with all your gear. Because you've got it like wrapped onto your onto your um, rucksack, and I'm I ain't getting any younger. So um, yeah, but we'll go for this one here again now. Okay, folks. So Jesus. Whoops. First section. 
third and fourth. <laughs> there you go. So put this in order. I'm going to put that rod there like that for a minute. All right, so I can get the other bag out. So the other bag's here. I'll start from back to front this time. So small tip goes in there like that. Next tip goes in like that. They don't come like that, guys, but I just put them in like that because it's... I know I'm taking them out in order then. I mean, one of them is quite tight getting it that way. But, um, and there it is. Close them up like so. And then basically I'll start from the small end, going around to the big end, like that. Tie them up. And he's ready to be strapped onto the bag. Okay guys, so uh, just literally packing up now. Rig wallets going into the bag. So I've got a rig wallet there full of place rigs. Got a rig wallet there full of um, Ray rigs. Got my jacket going in the bag. Uh, mobile phone can go in my pocket. And then we've got the GoPro stuff, what will go in the front in a minute. All right, so I'll leave that out. and leave the mics and stuff out. But I'm just gonna show you now how easy it all goes in. So if I usually leave my wallet there as well. So um, on the top there now, there's all of it in it, yeah. Um, so I can basically zip up the lid, like so. To be honest, I could probably fit that in there, if I'm honest. <laughs> if I can, look at that for a result, you know what I mean? All on your back. But um, let's have a look here. So, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I think it is, Joe, don't you? Yeah. So then that, that there comes around like that. All right, so that's, uh, that's all my gear in there now. That's my reels, my ro rods, uh, uh, my reels, my rigs, um, scales, um, what else is in there? Cool bag, it's got literally everything on the top. These, these top brackets are lovely, these straps. So basically all I can do, I can put my, tri I can put a folding tripod in there as well, yeah? Like that, and then what I can do, go on the top here, like so, basically clip them in. And that's them, and that's them cli all clipped in then, okay? So what I've done before, I've brought it over the, over the eye, that side. So uh, that's, what, that's all set. Exactly the same here now. Over the top, clip in, pull tight, okay? Exactly the same there, pull tight. Now, I'll put, my, I'll put that in the front. I'm gonna zip this up quickly, just so you show you. Everything is on your back. So I can literally put GoPro, um, bait, uh, rigs, reels, rods, and a fold-up tripod, all in that on on the top there. Hands free, comfortable, not not very heavy at all. I mean, try that, Joe. Give your opinion on that for walking any distances and stuff. Chuck that on your back. Lovely as well, isn't it? it is. Yeah, it sits, sits on. I know. I'm I'm really impressed with that bag because the plastic actually moulds into your back, so it's not stiff. It's yeah, it doesn't. It's hurt. it's a, it's up high. That's more comfortable than a seat. Yeah. Comfortable. Yeah, it is. It is. Very very nice bit of kit. But from all of us at Sea Angle Adventures, myself and Joseph, a few fish down at Salcombe today. We look forward to seeing you in the next adventure.